asking to BBC to watch this because no one else, frankly, does pomp and pageantry like our armed forces. And as the head of the armed forces, this is an important moment for the Queen. Um, the ceremony was 260 years old. Truth and the Courage marked the official birthday of the British sovereign for that many years. It's a very special occasion, and I don't think we will ever see uh, a pageant Truth and the Colour ever again. So this is a moment to remember. So the House of Cavalry returning, and Her Majesty as ever having a very, very close look. This is the inspection of the returning troops. Duke of Kent saluting Colonel Lutz. And what we see, Jamie, is a monarch with an probably the most profound moment uh, of the Queen's birthday parade. Normally it happens on horse guards. But it's when the guardsmen and the troopers of the Household Cavalry get to look their monarch in the eye, and vice versa. I remember when I was on parade, did any any smiles, this was a proper inspection, and she was looking for all the details, which she knows better than anybody. Dazzling. The detail is remarkable. Blues and Royals making their way past for the inspection, past the Greek Memorial to Queen Victoria dark blue tunics and the red plumes. Their colonel, of course, is the Princess Royal, who is riding in the procession. And who decided that uh, it might be better not to make the journey up to horse class today, but to stay at the palace and to inspect the troops in this way more comfortable for her, and we'll all understand that, and of course there will be that appearance with the working family, that's important Katie, isn't it, because um, it won't be just anyone turning up on the balcony today, it's clearly defined, it's those who are working members of the family. Yes, absolutely, that balcony to thank those, those that she calls her substitutes, for being out there day in and day out, working tirelessly for Her Majesty the Queen, flying the flag for Britain, not just here in the United Kingdom, but around the world. There are other events as well. Today, by the way, the Royal British Legion arranged tickets for lots of people deserving members of the public to come along and sit in these stands, which are not normally there, of course. So they've had a great vantage point for this uh, last hour of the parade and they'll get a bird's eye view of the flight bars. Well, well they will and it's wonderful that they're seating there and you're going to see the, the mouth fill up in the most spectacular way and obviously this is the, the central focal point of the for years now since before the COVID pandemic. It's very special to see her back at Monarchy HQ, Buckingham Palace, resplendent in this wonderful spring sunshine. Thank goodness the sun is shining. Long conversation going on between the Queen and the Duke of Kent. They are obviously comparing notes and pointing to this section of the guards and that section and, and the love to what they're saying. And so would I, and I think the guards, if they see the pointing going on, will be in the sixes and sevens, well, we're going to be pleased they're being pointed out a lot. The Royal Party back into Buckingham Palace, through the archway, into the central section of Buckingham Palace, before they reappear upstairs on that balcony. In the short one. Now, this is the moment you were talking about earlier, Jamie, and applying it again, the guards, that moment of eye contact, although it's more distant today than it would be on the parade ground, but it's still there. Participant in these great state events. We have a very visible 
sign of the changing of the guard in the forecourt of Buckingham Palace. Her Majesty has returned inside, but we will see her again, fear not. And maybe a good moment, changing of the guard, just to explain very quickly that uh, the escort has... Did you ever put that sign to this? It does, it hasn't finished well, that's yet. Well, that's your go-to. Well, think about that, it's going to be quite strong. Uh-huh. Buckingham Palace and at St. James's Palace, taking over from the other guard, which is um, drawn from the coast stream, as you can see. Well, well. Um, they've got a few more hours <laughs> <It's happy>. to do that. Why do you know this story? Why do you know this story? واقعا رفت ملکه تو فکر کنم سنش یه هفته بالا نمیتونه بگرن هنوز اصف جره جره جله مونده جره مونده جره مونده جره آه ایرش گارد So as the guard is changed, we're mindful, of course, of the fact that there are lots of people around who are now getting quite excited about the prospect of the fly past in a short while. And just outside the Buckingham Palace, just the other side of the railings, wearing socks with union flags on them, and the odd tie as well. Uh, one person asked if I'd wear a union flag tie on the 10 o'clock news, and I politely declined patriotic, Katie, <laughs> but because I felt that I would then be asked to wear lots of ties. Well, the policeman that let me through the gates this morning just had to show me his union jam theme socks. I said, I hope you're going to stop that. So I think we've all, this is an opportunity to get the bunting out. It's an opportunity to feel, to feel very proud, proud of our queen, proud of our country. Millions will be watching this around the world. I can tell you, I was on the mound yesterday. The atmosphere was electric. People who've been camping out overnight to make sure they got the very best seats the best seats to witness what we're about to witness, that all-important balcony moment. Well, quite a job for the uh, police as they try to arrange this flow of people in, a, in an orderly way. A short while ago, we heard from Alan Titchmarsh, uh, but we have another special guest uh, who's going to talk again to JJ. On their way to fire an 82-gun salute. They're, of course, responsible for firing these great gun salutes on days of national significance. And uh, we're used to seeing them uh, in Green Park, very often on the day of the birthday parade. But they're up in Hyde Park today, a bigger park. And that gun salute will be fired today. Shortly, but um, you can see now the the crowd still making its way, and it's in two or three sections. So uh, by the time it's all together, I think we'll see the mall pretty full by the time that uh, we reach just before one o'clock. And the highlight of the morning, if I can say that, because we've already had several highlights uh, with the parade itself, but the highlight probably for lots of people will be to see Her Majesty. Uh, leading a family onto the balcony and it's lovely to see people having their journey here and off taking lots of trouble straight here from the top end of the now this is looking back towards Trafalgar Square if I can just explain the geography uh, to the left hand side here we have um, Clarence House and St James's Palace to the right we have St James's Park uh, so that gives you a sense of the direction here all of them moving right down to Buckingham Palace itself. So as the crowd makes its way, let's join JJ once again. The aircraft is, is demanding, plus or minus five seconds, keeping it exact how close the aircraft to fly. You've got to bring two very fast moving objects together in a controlled manner. And you've got to try and do that quickly, but not so quickly uh, that you end up arriving, you know, clapping Red 2 with Royal Air Force Aerobatic Team, the Red Arrows. Uh, I'll be flying on the wing of uh, Red 1 as we conclude the ceremony. And it's going to be my first time doing that, and I'm hugely honoured and uh, privileged to be doing it. Uniting with thousands of other military personnel on the day to show our appreciation to the Majesty of the Queen. Of her... I'm really relieved. I know I'm going to feel a lot of pride as they go ahead, but also a little bit of nerve. Uh, if a 70 aircraft taking part in something to be really proud of. 
Well, if that doesn't whet the appetite, nothing will. Now look at this great vista. And that's uh, the expanse of Hyde Park. It's Park Lane, just uh, on the south of the screen there, the bottom of the screen. And then you have the expanse of Hyde Park and the... The interval between each round of fire is uh, 10 seconds. Officer Major Frank So the gun salute is uh, happening and it's been felt and heard all around this part of London. Now we can see the extent of people spending on flags and all kinds of jubilee memorabilia. Jubilee and mm. Expressions mm. of thanks. And you can imagine that people are now really keen to flow around this big stage that's been put up for the concert. And there's the mall, a scene which really you can't forget. A sea of people who come to pay their tributes <laughs> oh, to no, a record-breaking sure. queen, longest-serving monarch in <laughs> British history, who has just celebrated her 96th birthday. Oh, my like it Those are opening. And listen to the reaction of this delighted and grateful crowd. Oh, I need to go back to me. Majesty the Queen, leading the Prince of Wales, who's just taken the salute on her behalf at the birthday parade for the very first time. Duchess of Cornwall, Princess Royal, and husband Timothy Lawrence, the Earl of Wessex. And Jamie is someone who knows the family and knows the armed forces. And we see the three Cambridge children here, which again is the first time in part formally an event like this. What's going through your mind? I think the fact that uh, by, by her, her family is, is one she thing, just the fact that, that she is. It's a wonderful sort of uh, generational thing going on too, with Her Majesty's birthday, the Prince of Wales leading the parade, and Prince William's regiment, the Duke of Cambridge's regiment, the Irish Guards, shooting the colour. It's a fantastic symmetry. Look at the skies. Everyone now very excited to see this. Image wins and we did a good for us. I got sure why. And here goes the Platinum Jubilee fly past on this day of the Queen's official birthday. The Queen surrounded by those working members of the royal family specially invited by her to be on this balcony to share this experience. We very on the approaching helicopters leading the way is a royal navy followed by two Merlins. from the Royal Air Force and three Chinooks from the Royal Air Force too. The Chinooks are mistakable and filling the air, filling the skies with this thunderous noise. Now this should be familiar to lots of people. This is much loved. It's the Royal Air Force Battle of Britain Memorial Flight. The Lancaster, only two of those in a condition to fly these days. Three Spitfires and two Hurricanes. 
memories of Over the skies, over Buckingham Palace. You know how can we do this here? And they have to know what they're doing with this thing. using sensors to survey and to intercept and exploit signals across the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. Very important part in intelligence gathering. Special formation of okay. 15 typhoons. The Queen smiles in appreciation. Perfect formation. Oh, that's wonderful. But it's pretty noisy. And here we are, the climax of the Platinum Jubilee fly past. No better sight in red, white and blue. Nine Hawks. The RAF Aerobatics team, the Red Arrows. sense, Katie, that the Queen rather enjoyed that, smiling all the way. Oh, I think, well, you know what they say, with the Queen smiles, she lights up a room. Well, she's lit up the mail and beyond today. She looked like she was enjoying every moment, and to see her interact with her, her little great-grandchildren like that was just a joy to me. Listen to the response when the Queen waves. People want her to understand that they are sending their good wishes too. That's it's palpable, isn't it? It absolutely is. There was no guarantee that we would see the Queen today. We know she's been back with these other sort of ability problems, but here she is. She wants to be seen, and she's doing that in the most splendid way. The anthem is played. That signals really the end of the balcony appearance. The Queen will now lead members yes, of the royal family yeah. back into Buckingham Palace. shows its appreciation once again that the monarch who wasn't able to attend the parade itself was nonetheless determined to appear not once but twice on that balcony to acknowledge A, the troops and B, of course, the huge crowd, all of them wishing Her Majesty a happy birthday. Jamie, from your point of view, given that we were talking about standards at the parade, now we've seen the standard of the fly part. We can, Hugh, and for those pilots and for the guardsmen on parade, just seeing the reception they got from these crowds, it's, it's that affirmation point again. It's absolutely wonderful to behold in a happy, happy day. And Katie, just a final word about that balcony appearance and seeing those generations there, just a sense of respect and admiration for the last 70 years. 
Well, I think, Hugh, the point about a jubilee is it's a moment to reflect, to look back, to celebrate the now, and to look forward. And you saw the Queen there with three generations of hers, three future kings. She said in that jubilee message she wants to look forward to the future with confidence and enthusiasm. You get the feeling that she can absolutely... Well, it's been a memorable start to this Batman Jubilee celebration, a birthday parade that's brought out the very best in the troops, of course. Great day for everyone at the Household Division and a stunning to Her Majesty the Queen, led, of course, by the Prince of Wales on horse guard. So we look forward very much to the days ahead. It's back to Kirsty in the Jubilee Studio. Thanks. Thanks, Hugh. And just look at those scenes on the mall. If anybody was wondering, if anybody dared wonder, will people turn out for the Platinum Jubilee?